How's it going guys? Welcome to another video. And today I'm going to be talking about Molex power versus SATA power. Now we're not going to be discussing SATA anything else except for SATA power. Like this is SATA data. So this is just a data cable with the SATA standard. There's a lot of different PCIe SATA stuff. We're not talking about any of that. We are strictly talking about this, which is SATA power. So this will be like what plugs into your hard drive, your DVD, ROM, whatever. It's power based on the SATA standard. So first I'm gonna go over Molex, and this one's pretty easy because it's pretty old and not very complicated. It doesn't have a lot of features. So this is a Molex connector, and you can tell it has four pins on it. Molex only comes with four pins because Molex only offers two types of power, five volt or 12 volt, and each of them has a ground. So you'll see the yellow pin, or the yellow wire, is your 12 volts, and the black wire is the ground for the 12 volts. And the red wire is the five volts, and the black wire is the ground for that five volt rail. And that's pretty much it. So it's very simple, maximum power, 12 volts, four pins, pretty standard. You'll see this in about every computer, and it was a huge standard for a while until SATA came out, I think in 2003, and that was like back in the 1980s. Okay, so SATA is something that looks like this. And you can tell this is actually a Molex 2 SATA converter, and you can tell there's only four, still only four um, cables that go to it, but SATA, if you go to a actual SATA cable, um, has 15 pins. So a lot more than just the regular four that Molex has. So these 15 pins, I'm gonna just post up a little graph on either side of my face right now. Uh, you can see most of them are actually redund not redundancy, they're all in parallel. So SATA has three types of power. You can have 3.3 volts, five volts, or 12 volts. So you still have the five and 12 volts that Molex offers, but they also offer a 3.3 volt power source, which actually not a lot of devices even use these days, but some do and they have their advantages. But that's not the point. Um, so each of these power sources has three um, pins in parallel to reduce the impedance. And now, why would you want to reduce the impedance? I'm not going to go too technical into this, but reducing the impedance basically creates a better ground for the system. And that's like the top characteristic that changes whether you have an effective ground is the impedance. So running three pins in parallel for the same exact source lowers the impedance. So as you can see from the graph, we have three um, pins that are just for the 3.3 volt, then we have three grounds, then we have three pins that are for the five volt, one of them is the precharge, and then we have two pins for ground, one for staggered and spin up, which staggered and spin up is basically a way um, the computer, and normally you turn your computer on, all your drives start spinning at the same time, they immediately start up. But what staggered does, it delays some of the drives from spinning up on startup, and it provides a stable demand for the power supply. So the power supply is not getting like overloaded at all at once when you're starting up and all your system needs power. Uh, and so that's another feature that SAT offers that Molex does not. And then obviously at the bottom here, we see three more pins for the 12 volt. So that's why you have 15 pins on SATA and you only have four pins on the regular Molex. But if you have an adapter like this, you're only gonna get the advantages, or you're gonna lose all the advantages of SATA because you're only getting the power from Molex. Like if it's like this, a Molex to a, to a SATA converter, you still only have the four pins. So you only have five volts and 12 volts. You can't get the 3.3 volts out of this and you don't get any of the advantages of the pre-charge from the five volt connector or the 12 volt, or you don't get the staggered startup as well. So keep that in mind if you're actually looking that in depth into this, but it probably won't affect you much. I usually use this if I need like an extra fan power, so it's not that big of a deal. All right guys, consider subscribing if you haven't already. I will do more videos like this. I might do one on data. There's a lot more data on SATA, uh, but if you want that video, let me know and I'll see you guys in the next one.